Hi, this is Vic Dorfman from Just Record It, JustRecord.it, and in today's video, you're going to learn how to apply ID3 tags to your podcast audio file. Now, I've done some research, and essentially, there are only seven tags that really matter for a podcast, and this is based um, upon uh, work that was done by another blogger who checked into all of the top podcasts all of the top rated podcasts on iTunes and found that the tags that they had in common were these seven tags. So essentially the conclusion was that in terms of ranking your podcast, these are the essential tags and all of the other ID3 tags. And there are dozens upon dozens of ID3 tags. These are the seven that actually matter for ranking your show. So. These seven are the title, the artist, the album, the year, the genre, the cover art, and the description for the podcast. So I'm reading directly off of our SOP, our standard operating procedure for recording and editing podcasts. And the very first thing you are going to want to do is open up iTunes. And you're going to click on iTunes and click on check for updates. Now in my case, I'm already on the most current version. Now if you're not on the most current version, you're going to want to update to the latest version. Now we're going to go to file menu and choose add to library and then we're going to choose a file to add into our podcast library. Now, in this case, if I go to let's see here, podcasts, and then I click on my podcasts, meaning the podcast that I have stored on my computer, uh, then this is what comes up. Now, if I take a random podcast. Let's say here's a podcast that I did with Natalie Lucier on my membership site success podcast. And I click on get info. I right, right click and click on get info. Okay, you're going to see this dialog box, which is where you enter your ID three tags. So let's go through each of these one by one. First is the title. And this depends on how you prefer to name each of your individual shows. Now, this is the title of your show, of the episode, not of the entire podcast. So in this case, this is my 11th episode. So I named it MSS011 colon, and then Natalie Lucier on the primacy of design and winning in the female market. I always suggest that you include your guest's name in the title because remember, iTunes is a search engine and people might be searching for Natalie Lucier, who's a popular online figure, and then they might come across this podcast episode. And then you might want to include some descriptive kind of title, maybe with a keyword or two, as long as you don't overdo it. Now the author, in this case, you're going to include uh, the name of the host, and maybe some kind of keyword phrase. In this case, I'm known for membership sites and membership site setup, so I've included Vic Dorfman hyphen membership site expert. Now, the podcast, this is where you enter the actual podcast name. And my podcast is entitled the Membership Site Success Podcast, and then hyphen and a keyword phrase that describes it. In this case, it's how to start and grow a profitable membership site. So if somebody comes on iTunes and they search membership site, or membership sites, I will probably be one of the first people to pop up, one of the first shows to pop up. Release date, this is self-explanatory. This is the date that you've published the podcast. Album artist, this is going to be exactly the same entry as the author. So you just copy this one and you paste it into album artist and you paste it into composer. So the composer field and the album artist field are just duplicates of the author field. Grouping, this too 
is a duplicate of the podcast field. So you're just going to copy the podcast field and you're going to paste it in the grouping field. And it's going to be the same exact thing. Genre is always going to be podcast. Year. In this case, the year of the recording was 2015. Runtime will be populated automatically. Track. This is where you put your episode number or you can leave it blank. Um, as you saw in the document that we just looked at, track isn't one of the important ID3 tags. Now comments, this is where you insert a, a short description of your podcast episode. In this case, I'm writing Natalie Lucier, founder of ambitionally.com, joins us to discuss the crucial importance of design and how to build a subscription business in the female business market. So it's a short and sweet little description that actually appears in iTunes so you're going to want it to be an enticing little bit of copy. Now, once you filled out all the details, you're going to head over to artwork. And your artwork file has to be a perfect square. So the recommended size is 1400 pixels by 1400 pixels. And you simply add the piece of artwork from your computer. You just uploaded it or download it to your computer and then click on add artwork right here and it'll scan your computer and you can select your file. Now keep in mind that iTunes prefers your album art to be 150 kilobytes or less. And I have seen instances of iTunes rejecting a feed on account of the file size of the artwork. So uh, run it through some kind of online compression or in case you um, if you have a Mac you can simply open your your uh, preview and then you can export the file as a JPEG file and decrease the quality. Now, yes it'll decrease the quality of the image a little bit but it's not something that's going to be you know um, a background on somebody's desktop. It doesn't have to be picture per pixel perfect. It just has to uh, be representative and meet the iTunes requirements. So once you've got your artwork, you're going to head over to description. And you can see that in description, I've selected the same, I've written the same thing that I had over in comments. So you can actually just copy this whole thing and paste it here. And keep in mind that the comments field right here, it does have a character limit. I think it's 255 characters, if I'm not mistaken. But you'll run out of space. You, you'll, you won't be able to type once you reach the character limit. Let's see how far I can go here. And once you reach that limit, oop, then you'll get that crazy annoying sound. Okay. Now let's head over to options. And here you want to make sure that you select podcast. By default, music is selected. So you want to make sure that you select podcast because if you do select music, you can see that the description option disappears from these top tabs. So let's select podcast and you see we get the description tab back up here. Okay. Sorting, you don't have to do anything here. These fields are automatically populated based on what you enter in the details tab. And file, you don't have to do anything here. But what I do recommend is that you uh, take a look at these details and make sure that your file size isn't too large. You want to keep it, you know, ideally under 50 megabytes, depending on the length of your show. Of course, if you have a two hour show, that might not be practical. The bit rate that I recommend, now we've found in our business, now keep in mind we deal with podcasts quite often. We found that the ideal bit rate at which to encode your episode is actually 128 kilobytes per second. Now, if you go online and you Google this, there are varying opinions on this topic, but what we found is that if you go below 128 kbps, your audio quality is um, noticeably worse, okay? And if you go above 128 kilobytes per second, then your audio quality doesn't improve so substantially as to justify the degree to which it increases your file size. So. What, what this is really about is coming to a compromise between the file size and the bit rate and the audio quality. 
because if your file size is too large, then it's going to take longer to load for your listeners. It's going to cost you more money and run up higher bandwidth depending on your podcast hosting company, whether it's Libsyn or Blueberry, or even if you're hosting it on your own website. But it does kind of impact the user experience because a longer, a, a, a bigger file size takes longer to load. And if somebody's on their iPhone or whatever, they might just get bored waiting for your podcast to download and then they'll just, you know, move on. And that's really all there is to applying ID3 tags. And like I said, there are applications that allow you to apply a, a whole plethora of ID3 tags that aren't included in, in iTunes, but those are not at all necessary. And I would just recommend that you skip them and focus on the essentials laid out in this video. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave your comments below and I'll personally come around and respond.